Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This store is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Get signed up for their email distribution list to find out when the store will be opening, what their hours will be, and most importantly, what they will have in inventory at abvbarrelshop.com. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss if the appearance of reality housewives bourbon brands just goes too far. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Luke Otero, Jim Fosnott, and Brian Thompson. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. So I have not been a fan of celebrity endorsed bourbons uh, and, and really most of them. There are a couple where it seems like they're legitimately bourbon fans and they are trying to curate a good brand. But for the most part, it's, you know, slapping their name on a bottle. They don't really even know anything about it. They don't, they don't know anything about bourbon history. They don't know anything about the brand, what makes it different. They just know their names on the bottle. And now we're getting so far down the celebrity feeding trough that we're now at reality TV stars. And, you know, it's a real high housewives brand. And I saw that and I'm like, here we go. This is, this is the beginning of the end. So we'll talk about that. And if it is too far and how do we reel this thing back in, if that's even possible at this point, but we'll get to that after the break for right now, Jim said there's something he wanted to talk about. What is that, Jim? So Steve, the other day you and I were at the shop and we had a uh, whiskey, Rick, I always say, I want to say risky wick, but risky, uh, whiskey, risky yes, wick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we had whiskey, Rick stop by and say hi. And uh, you know, he's someone we met through our travels uh, to Key West. Yep. And my question is, What's the most interesting person that you've come across in your travels? And not necessarily famous, but just an interesting person like that you've come across. It's been, you know, kind of stuck with you. Okay. Okay. Uh, along our bourbon journey, I think we should say. So it, it, it unites well, all of us, right? Yeah. Well, my, mine's not on my bourbon journey, but whatever oh, you want it to be. My rule, Steve, I, my, my small talk. So it can be anybody that interesting that we've run into? Gosh. While, tra- was- while traveling, like with while travel. Traveling. So if you're, if you're, you know, in Mexico or you're in Hawaii or Alaska, like you came across someone like, holy crap, this guy, you know, been a lumberjack for 40 years as, you know, three fingers left. And this is a life <laughs> story type of thing. Hmm. Does anyone got someone that they that they can think of? Jim has the benefit of his topic. He's thought it through. And we're just getting sprung on us now. Does anybody have someone interesting that they've met in their life travels? <sighs> I mean, I met Luke Otero on uh, on a <laughs> bourbon trip. I think that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. I was going to say the same thing. I met Steve Hakeley. And it's, uh... <laughs> we were at uh, we were at what the Bourbon Affair was the event, and uh, yeah, so we're we're both there and uh, riding the bus together and going on the same event, and uh, then we're best friends. By the end of it, we're best friends. So uh, I'd say that was a pretty good one. <laughs> Steve, my first year to the New Orleans Bourbon Festival, you know that I missed my first flight, right? And right, then of I, course, yeah. I got one five hours later, showed up super late. Um, but on that flight, I, I got the cult flight. I took a south, Southwest flight because that's what was available. Sure, sure <laughs> and, the cult. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, it flew me to Nashville, then it flew me to New Orleans. So in Nashville, a person entered the plane. His name was Tom. He used to be in the Navy. Now he services like he services ships like as an engineer or something. I don't don't remember, but we became really good friends. We had like five drinks on the plane together. He was, he was older, right? Like I was what, like 27 then. And he was like 50. 
<laughs> we just had the it's best the time on the flight to New Orleans. So he was going there to work on a ship. I was like, oh, I'm going to a bourbon festival. <laughs> and we had the best time. We're still Facebook friends. Like I've seen his kids graduate, like him celebrate like 30th anniversaries. Like it's weird that like I know so much about his life, but I only met him on a Southwest flight. <laughs> yeah. That is, that's pretty yeah. wild. That's a good story. Yeah, and like, he told me congratulations when I got married, like reached out when my dad passed away. Like, so it was a weird friendship on a, on a Southwest flight. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's pretty good. That's a good one actually. So she's, she's coming yeah. up with a good one. What about you, Ryan? You know, I've always said one of the best things about this business is the people that you meet and you come across. I think it's really cool. And some of the friendships that have been created. <laughs> Uh, one of those for me, one of the most important, uh, has been with the uh, commanding general at 10th mountain at Fort drum. He has since been promoted to a three-star, but at the time he was at drum, he was a two-star general and it was, uh, uh, his general Menez. And, uh, if you want anyone leading the 10th, it's this guy. Uh, he's such a badass, but then he's so friendly as well. And so down to earth. And, uh, he's been out to our taste room a, a couple times. And we become friends, and uh, he's just a, an amazing guy, and I'm, I'm honored to, to know him and and uh, and to, to call him a friend. So uh, none of yeah. that happens without doing what we're doing here, and so that's really special to me to uh, to have his support and what we're doing, and and uh, to uh, be able to shoot him an email, and I know he'll reply within a day, and even a text. So it's pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, that's pretty cool, and uh, yeah, it'd be I you know. The, you have a personal friendship with him. It'd be interesting to, you know, go to where he's stationed and stuff like that and see with uh, all of his soldiers around him. And uh, I guarantee you they're not as casual with him as you get to be just as a friend. So that, that, that'd be pretty wild to see. Well, I've got a funny story well, about that. Well, the military well. structure a, is, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a funny story. I've got a, a buddy that's retired down in Boulder. He was a recon sniper in the tent for four years. And he came up one weekend when General Menez was going to be in town. I'm like, dude, I'm going to introduce you to the CG. You know that? He's like, Oh fuck! Are you kidding me, dude? Get out of here! Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to introduce you, and so I did introduce Weston to General Menez, and they, they had a good chat for about seven, ten minutes or so, and then at the end, Weston walked straight up to him. He's like, "Bro, how'd I do? What I even say? I was so nervous." <laughs> and, the, and and Weston is like the most cool, calm, collected dude. I mean, hell, he was a sniper for crying out loud, right? And right. he's like, "Dude, how'd I do? I was so nervous talking on CG. I can't believe I just met him." It's like I was that drum for four years. I never got close to the CG, right? So it was, uh, yeah, it's pretty neat to, to be able to introduce some of those guys like that. Yeah. 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 Luke, any other ones besides uh, when you met me in Kentucky? Yeah. Next to you. Uh, no, I don't think anything's going to top that, but <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> but I've gotten to be really good friends and we kind of just met out of the, out of just, it just happened is Jonathan Banks. Um, he's the, uh, he plays Mike on Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Um, he joined our golf group and for some reason, uh, in our country club, he just, he and I just kind of gravitated towards one another and, and, uh, you know, he's just like Ryan and this general, he meant us, is, uh, he's a just down to earth guy. And we, we were actually, uh, Darlene and I spent some time with him and his wife in, in Malibu at their house just recently. And, and it was it was just not not just that time, but all the other times. Um, you know, he's he's well established actor. He's been well, he's intense on his characters. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah, and so, <clears throat> but he is just so down to earth, and we enjoy. Is he the teacher, Luke? Sorry, is he the teacher in that? No, no, he's no, he's the, the no, he's the kind of like the uh, assassin uh, or enforcer awful, type of guy. Enforcer, yeah. Yeah. okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. His, no. his, his character name is Mike and right. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. I'm with you. Jonathan Banks. And he's been, he's been around movies and shows forever, but this is a better call Saul and breaking bad where his basically his his come out years. And so he spent a lot of time in New Mexico filming and that's how we got to be friends and we continue to be friends. So, um, Luke knows everybody. Gosh, darn. He knows. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Just from all walks of life. Oh, the, the Luke just knows. Uh, yeah. The one time I met, I, I mentioned that uh, the guy who invented the flaming hot Cheetos. Luke was like, "Oh, I know him." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good guy. I know him real well. <laughs> like, yeah, what the I was hell, actually Luke? really, really excited to have that conversation that night because. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what the hell? Who, who knows the flaming hot Cheetos <laughs> right, guy? Exactly. <laughs> he was like a Pepsi uh, guy, and then uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Up, we, up. 
no. he, he sat next to the war department for dinner and I sat on the other side, but uh, yeah, great guy too. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> If Who you, do you know someone, uh, just throw out the Luke. He may, yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, all the way down to Billy the Kid. I mean, for God's sakes, he's yeah. got. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, Jim. How about you? You you asked the question. What uh, what do you got? So I was around thirty years old. I was traveling in Mexico and Puerto Vallarta, and I met this guy Sean. I still see, you know, kind of keep in touch with him time to time. And he was a few years older than us, but this guy was awesome. He him and his girlfriend had uh, driven a station wagon as far into Mexico as they could till it died. And then they just worked on their way up the coast. And we were staying in a five-star resort and they were staying like three blocks off the beach. We were paying, you know, 200 bucks a night. They're paying like 10 bucks a night for this little room they're in. This guy was a carpenter in Canada and he knew he'd get laid off two or three months in the winter every year. And so he'd live like a peasant all year and save his money. And whenever he'd get laid off, he would just travel to a different part of the world and keep enough money in his bank account to get home. And he had been all through Asia, Europe, Africa, South America. He'd started the first year, he was 18, and I think he was 35 when we met him. And uh, it was just fascinating. This guy just didn't have a bunch of money, just carpenter, but he'd sometimes he'd go by himself. Sometimes he'd bring a friend, a girlfriend, whatever, and he would uh, always be you know, a few blocks off the main resort area. He spoke like six languages at this point. And... Oh like that's how we met. I mean, we were haggling for something in, in Mexico and we were about to get screwed and he stepped in and, and saved us. And, uh, but it's just such a cool expect. I can't imagine having the balls to say, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to head to another country for three months my, by myself or, or whatever else. He was just, it was fascinating. And uh, I still hear from him from time to time. It's just pretty cool. That's pretty nice. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's really nice. Yeah. All right, gang. Well, it is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? I'm going to go first. I've got Buffalo Trace. I've got their kosher wheat, the wheat recipe. So uh, this is a well-loved bottle, though I haven't opened it in a long time. So we'll see. Maybe maybe it's got some life left in it. Here we go. It's got some base left in it, but that's about it. <laughs> Looking on the bright side there, huh? Yes, yeah. So we'll see what happens. All right. Next up is going to be McNew. McNew, what do you got? I have some hard shoop sipes bourbon that's been incredibly well loved i don't think the court okay. is going to do it but andrew webrink was involved in that product yes okay okay that's enough to take the lead i don't think it's going to be enough to win but we'll see luke you're next i've got a bottle of buzzards roost uh, toasted barrel okay good stuff nope no not not enough ryan mcnew's got the lead here she already won one cheap one tonight. Let's not let her win another cheap one. You know, uh, Steve, I saw your email earlier today about your single malt uh, shows coming up, and so yeah. I need to get. A, I'm going to get a couple tickets to those. So, but uh, that uh, inspired me to bring out our own American nice single malt. new bottle too. Let's see here. Yeah, Here's new bottle. So if it's anyone's fault, it's all mine. So let's just see what happens here. Okay, no, that's the mic muffle. I know that. Yeah, it is. That was yeah. pretty good on my side. Yeah, yeah. All right. Unfortunately, we got to go with what came through, and unfortunately, it's not <laughs> enough. McNew has the lead. All right, Jim. Uh, here's what we got. McNew uh, had a weak offering, but it's been enough. And uh, uh, we know Ryan got screwed there, but what are you going to do? It's I, I feel like I could steal this one, so I'm going to break out a new bottle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Heidi's personal stash. Uh, Heidi, yes, I've got a. I've got a uh, Samuel Burton Distillery here from a uh, from the Missouri area here. Their their bourbon whiskey. So let's see. It hasn't been opened yet. Hopefully, it does me right. That's enough. That's, That's enough. a winner. Yeah. That is a winner. So yeah, he takes it. All right. Cheers, gang. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're gonna be talking about. Do we need a real bourbon back in? Now we've got uh, the real housewives starting their own bourbon brands. What's next? So we'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott in the greater St. Louis area. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only focuses on single barrels. 
We aren't open just yet, but our plan is to have the most diverse single barrel offerings from our many friends in the world of bourbon. By signing up for a weekly email, you will know our entire inventory we have on hand. In addition to single barrels, we'll have a tasting bar and a gift shop featuring logo merchandise for both the shop and the ABV network, as well as a full curriculum of bourbon education classes. Additionally, we'll use the gift shop to feature products from our partners in the world of bourbon, companies like Art Eatable Chocolates and Old Man Bay Signs. Head over to ABV Barrel Shop to sign up for our email and text distribution list so you can stay in the know. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Hi, this is Mr. Bill. You're listening to Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we are talking about Steve's hatred of celebrity bourbons and our Real Housewives bourbon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't like celebrity bourbons, and now we're so far down. It's, it's you know housewives, and I, I, this kind of stuff drives me crazy. And, and you know, I'm not bashing reality TV. I actually like reality TV, but I don't like it when it's just so fake. I even like like the game show types. I still watch Survivor and Big Brother, and you can say, well, the producers. They, they get involved and, and, and skew things how they go. I get that, but at least there's some reality to it, I think. I, I think the, the Real Highest Wives, I think that's all literally scripted, at least at least in general. Here's what's going yeah. to do. We're going to go over to this house, and there's going to be a dinner party, and then you're going to get mad, and at some point you need to throw that tray at her. Oh, there's and, always uh, going to be a fight when we're yeah, having dinner. Yeah. Nobody has a nice dinner anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there would be no such thing as just a dinner party where everything went nice, everyone was pleasant, that it was all good, and there was no incidents. And I, I just think it's so fake. And now, this is this is a bourbon brand now. So now, and how how involved do we think the so, the Real Housewife is really um, in the in, into the bourbon? So, Steve, I will say I didn't know about this, so I I looked it up real quick. Okay. Um, right before the show. And, um, so this lady, her name's Dorinda. She didn't even really know what bourbon was. Yeah, she so, was apparently a Jay-Z party. And she was like, oh, there's women drinking dark liquor. I thought that was a man's drink. Okay. I already don't like her. I already am mad no, about her. I don't like it either. I don't, I'm already mad. I'm like, you're a woman. You're a woman on a show that has money that you, you can do whatever you want. And you think only men can do this. I'm, I'm mad right now about that. But, um, yeah, I just, and she named it after her damn house. It's called Bluestone Manor Bourbon after her damn house in Massachusetts. Like get, you know, get but more. I mean, she admits she's not a fan. I, I yeah, want, like, I, I want to drink a bourbon. What with, it was before she had made a she, brand. It's everyone has a passion for it. They care about it. I yeah. care about bourbon. Why I do these shows, why, why I started out doing this is because I love bourbon. And I, I just wanted that opportunity to come in and talk about it. And I thought, you know what, if we get people to listen, that'll be cool. But if not, I get to have fun with my friends and we're doing what we want to do. And, and we're, we're, we're just fans. And, and I never want to change it. I never want Eddie Russell to come on a show and be like, ah, eh, who cares? It's Eddie Russell. I, I, I want to be like, Oh my God, it's Eddie Russell. Every time he comes on. I, so I'm just a fan and I don't like people who aren't fans and just using bourbon to make money. And I think that's a bad thing for the industry. Yeah, no, she just guys? said, I need to stick my name on something else. Let me get a bourbon. Let me get a liquor brand. She didn't use, I don't even think she knows that it's bourbon. She just said, Jay-Z, Jay-Z has to rock or whatever he's doing. Let me get a liquor brand. She don't, she doesn't even know it's bourbon. She doesn't even know where they're sourcing it from. It's irritating. Is it, is it I'm, I'm mad now. I, I'm usually generally okay, but I'm mad right now. <laughs> yeah, I bet, is it true that they're using her bath water in the mash? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've been I've been made aware of this one for 
since it started, just because uh, you don't Darlene, represent it. You know, or, if so, it's great. Yeah, we love yeah, it. Dar <laughs> Darlene, we did a dinner so party with her last it. week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the War Department watched this Dorinda medley. Oh. Yes. And she's she's actually no longer on the on the housewives because whatever, but <laughs> terrorist activities. Yeah. But this so she comes up with this blue blue stone manor and uh, mm -hmm. it's a five year weeded bourbon. She doesn't know where it comes from, what it does, what it doesn't. She do. doesn't even know what weeded means. She's like, "What's yeah, a weed? Yeah. I know I'm gluten free. What is <laughs> this? I don't even know what a plant is." <laughs> so I, I'm I'm of the opinion like Steve. You know, they they're they've gone too far. Just yeah. like, I, you know, I don't really bitch or complain about, about too much. Mm -hmm. And all the times I've been on your shows, I mean, Steph, that's not who we are. We don't we don't personally attack people, or we don't. Attack yeah, people. but this is just uh, too much, right? Because they don't care about bourbon. One of my yeah. rant and raves at the last time I was on one of your shows is those two fools from um, Vanderpump Rules came out with that two year bourbon, and and yeah. it was and they they added sherry or something yeah. to it. And they were calling it a bourbon, and uh, I think Becca Sue was on the show, and and we we went off on that, and that was one of my really, uh, as McNew says, uh, <laughs> high end bitches or something like that. Right. <laughs> oh, there's so much stuff like that. Did you see recently, McNew? I know you were on the thread where they had a bottled and bond bourbon that was what 120 proof. Oh dear God! <laughs> well, God yeah. love Brasco. He tagged us all in that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, legit, uh, legit. There's a bottle and bond yeah. bourbon, 120 proof, and yeah. it, got, it got approval I, because the TTP is just check, and I check. Be nice okay, to check. Let that distillery remain it. named. They're out of Michigan, though. But um, he, uh, yeah, they said, well, the TTB approved it. You should have fucking known better in the first place if you're going to call yourself Luke, a distillery. Luke, you know, you know about this stuff, and, and Ryan, you do too. Ultimately, yeah. you're responsible for the rules. Yeah. So if, if <laughs> even if, if they if they falsely like, sign oh, off on it. If we they falsely wrong. sign we off on educating it. ourselves, why weren't you educated yeah. in the first place? I'm not a yeah. distiller and I know better. <laughs> Steve, we had one at Total Wine that I, I can't remember who the brand was, but we had one that was like 108 proof bottle and bottle. Like, that's not that's possible. Not like, a thing. But yeah. I've got, but I've got two it's questions. Very much get ripped apart, but two God. questions about this housewife bourbon. Where's it coming from? Good question. And who's buying it? Yeah. She doesn't even know, and she doesn't even care. <laughs> so. yeah. What's her name? Dorinda Medley. So the funny thing is, Steve is bitching about this, but next week he's going to have her on a podcast. <laughs> it'll, it'll be nice to her. <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll be great. Like, be we great. have a great guest today, Dorinda Medley. Dorinda Medley. <laughs> and she'll be like, well, I named it after my fucking house in Massachusetts. Um, I don't have any money, but my husband does. And I just, I just wanted to own a brand. So now I own, I own a dark liquor is what she called it. I own a dark liquor. <laughs> oh, like, were you on those emails that time when they sent me that rapidly aged stuff? And, oh and... God. Yeah. They sent a sample, Steve. I, I actually gave those away to someone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I ripped on them uh, because I don't I don't like that stuff. And and they're like, well, we would still want to come on your show. And I'll be like, okay, but I'm going to tell you yeah, what yeah. I think of so, this stuff. So but, it actually seemed very legit because I got that first email and I was like, okay, cool. I, I will CC Steve in on this. They seemed like they were doing things right. Then they weren't. Yeah, and yeah. I, I got bottles. You got bottles too. And then I did. Yeah. They sent me bottles. Yeah. And then I, uh, um, you know, they reached out to us. So I don't know anything about them. And they're like, we're sending yeah. the samples. I'm like, oh, whatever. Okay. And then yeah. I get them and I was like, what? Rapidly. Yeah. I, I opened one of them and I was like, oh, oh no. And we gave them to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, the, the bottle is shaped like uh, Rocking Hill Farms. I mean, if that's. It, uh, it's uh, not a bad looking bottle. I'll like give her some design props. It looks good. Yeah. I would be intrigued if I saw it on a shelf, but now that I know the story, no, I, I'm mad because she doesn't even care about bourbon. She doesn't she well, doesn't care about a product with her name on it? Can yeah. you imagine so, that? So, I mean, so to the to the original question, have they gone too far? Yes. yes. I, yeah, I agree. Doubt. I agree. You know, here's some we know someone in bourbon that that got their name put on a product. They didn't ask for it, but their company came to them, and that's Freddie Johnson. And let me tell you yeah. something. You ever go to talk to Freddie Johnson about Freddie soda? He knows everything about that soda. He knows all the ingredients. He made him change some of the ingredients that weren't natural. Uh, he knows now how to drink soda, how to how to mix cocktails, what order you put it in. I mean, Freddie Johnson, you would think soda is <laughs> I mean, yeah. is, is is like bourbon, is you know, he he yeah. 
He's that passionate about it, mm-hmm. and, but because it's a brand with his name on it. This this lady who doesn't even know where it's from or what weeded bourbon is, or yeah. never even really. She's probably like, bourbon. "Where's Kentucky or right. Indiana? <laughs> where it's probably from?" She doesn't well, even. Ridiculous. Like yeah. Stephen at our at our shop, the, the the bar I'm building. I've never done a epoxy pour. I have probably spent 15 hours online researching how to effing do this because I'm scared to death. And right. she tries to spend 15 minutes researching her own bourbon. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's sad. She's like, oh, my name is trending. It's because we're shitting on your bourbon, but yes. <laughs> so I went, I, I just went to the website and the information piece says if you are looking to buy a barrel, please contact this number. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll be, that'll be in the barrel shop soon. So yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> she'll, she'll be an appearance there. So she'll be doing an educational what you, class. What are you going to name that one, Steve? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> 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 so yeah oh, there you go there you go so please uh, bourbon stop yeah <laughs> don't, don't, you know that i i i don't, I don't know I, I just can't imagine that uh, this I, I let's let's bring the people who are passionate about it make sure they're the ones that uh, that's who i'm going to reward with my money the people that are passionate about it not uh not somebody who just slaps their name on a bottle that, that's not my mm-hmm. thing all right we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us ryan we'll start with you where can people find you Across all socials at 10th MTN Whiskey and on our website, 10thWhiskey.com. All right, Jim. You can find me on Facebook at Jim Fosnot, on Instagram at Foz Jim, or you can find me working hard to get the ADV Barrel Shop open in Arnold, Missouri with Steve Akeley. All right, Luke. You can find us on Instagram at Santa Fe Boutique Wines and Luke Otero, Santa Fe Boutique Wines.com. All right, Luke, take us back to 1980 when the line, Luke, I am your father, came out. How did that change your life where people say that to you all the time? (laughs) It was, I am your father. (laughs) So you got to remember, I was, I had just gotten out of high school and Uh a year. So it was a great pickup line. (laughs) (laughs) All right, McNeil. The chicks dug it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the rumor going around in the shopping center, Jim and I are opening up, and it's that two hot guys are opening up a bottle shop. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. The ladies keep, you know, driving by, stopping by. Keeping in the window. It's a whole thing going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, two there's us, and there, there's, there's the a hot t-shirt. Guys are. Yeah, <laughs> two yeah. hot guys. So, so yeah. there you go. McNeil, how about you? Where can people find you? I am on Instagram at McNeilABB. All right. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. McDo, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. All right, great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. See you guys. Cheers. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen, or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country, ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com.
Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary or Neely Family Distillery's upcoming Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. <laughs>